In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your front wheel bearing with the hub. You can reuse your old hub, but I have a new one, so I'm gonna show you how to install both of these. Let's get started. Let's remove the wheel, 21 millimeter socket, remove all five of your lug nuts, and then pull the wheel off. Take the wheel off. Remove the axle nut. You need a 30 millimeter 12 point for these fasteners. Keep in mind, they are pretty tight. And now you just wanna make sure your axle pushes through the hub, which this one does, so that's perfect. I don't have to worry about it. If it doesn't, get a punch and a hammer, break it free because you don't want this to be seized up in here. When you pull the hub, if it is, it's gonna separate the inner CV joint. Next, we have to take off the cotter pin that locks the tie rod castle nut. This one's fairly rusty, so it might not come out. If it doesn't, I'm gonna to have to put the socket right over it and basically spin the nut off with the cotter pin still in here. I'm gonna try and break it free, but it looks like it might not happen. This is ready to break off of here, so we'll just get this off. And like I said, we're gonna hammer a socket right over and spin the castle nut off that way. This is going to be a 17 millimeter socket. I'm going to put the nut back on a couple threads so that when I release this tie rod, it doesn't just go falling down. It can be caught by the nut and then we'll remove the nut. Hit the knuckle right here. That should break the tie rod stud free from the knuckle itself. That did it. Take the nut back off and then we can pull the stud right through. Set this aside. Now I want to take the caliper off of the knuckle and for that I need a 17 millimeter socket to take off both of these bolts. Once you take one off, leave it in a couple threads to hold the caliper while you take the other one off. Once you have it off of here, make sure you hang it on the strut here so that it doesn't fall and you definitely don't want it putting any pressure on the brake hose. At this point, we can take the rotor off. As a side note, I'm showing you on the new knuckle because our old one doesn't have it, but if you have ABS, now is the time to unplug the sensor. It's bolted on with a little 10 millimeter bolt here push it out of the knuckle. If it's completely seized in here, you're probably going to need a new sensor. So keep that in mind. Again, our vehicle does not have ABS, so I don't have to worry about it. At the top right here, you have two 19 millimeter bolts that hold the strut on. Let's take both of these off, hold the bolt side with a wrench. There's one, leave the bolt in, and then take off the other one. Take them both out. Looks like the knuckle is kind of seized up in here in the strut due to rust, so we'll have to break it free. And to do that, just tap it with a hammer. Oh, or you can just pull straight down. At this point, you want to push the axle through as the knuckle comes down. We'll set the axle aside out of the way. Now we're going to have to take the ball joint stud out of the knuckle. I have a new ball joint with a new cotter pin here, but a lot of times these will actually be completely rusted and you'll have to hammer a socket on over the cotter pin and basically break it off that way. And then of course use a new one, always use a new one, even if it's in good condition. But what I'm trying to say is a lot of times it won't be this easy to remove these cotter pins. This is a 21 millimeter nut. Take that off, remove it completely. And this can get a little tricky here, but basically the knuckle is completely free. You just have to pull it up and off of this ball joint. And in order to not damage the boot, what I'm gonna do is tap on the knuckle here, pull up at the same time. And naturally, as I'm tapping and pulling up, this should break free within a few taps. Just make sure you don't hit the boot or the ball joint. Try to aim for the knuckle here. There we go. And there's your knuckle with the wheel bearing. I have the knuckle set up in the press here and we're going to press on the center, that's the hub right here, until it pops out through the other side. Put a socket here as a spacer so I can take up some of this distance. And now, make sure everything is nice and centered. There it goes. There's the hub. In here, 
Now you'll see the two ears of the snap ring and you either use some snap ring pliers or sometimes you can get away with using long needle nose, clamping the two ends together. That'll contract the ring and then you can pull it out. Before I do that though, I'm gonna apply some rust penetrant to hopefully help break it free. By the looks of it, it's gonna be pretty rusty in there. I'm gonna use a chisel bit and hammer this side in and then that side that way and hopefully that'll release it. Hmm. Or it'll break it. Uh, I guess I will try this side now, see what happens. Okay, so that moved. As you can see, my end broke on that side. So what I'm gonna do to get this snap ring out at this point is use a pair of locking pliers and lock it in really tight up against the um, knuckle. That's gonna prevent it from spinning as I push in that end that is not broken. Okay, it's moving, but it's springing right back. So with the help of my coworker, I'm going to punch this in and this snap ring does release, but only when I hammer it. So I need a third hand to put a, a pick right there. And basically what that's gonna do is once I hammer, it's going to drop the pick in and lock it down and prevent the snap ring from going back into its hole. Okay, so with a little bit of prying, I got a screwdriver behind the locking ring there and with another screwdriver, I'm gonna try and walk this out. This is basically the only, the only way to do it at this point since the other end of the snap ring is broken. And with a pick, I'm going to attempt to lift this end up. So pry it out like that. And while I'm prying, I'm gonna take a pick insert it underneath and try to lift up. Perfect. Once this snap ring is lifted up out of its spot. Oh, ooh, no. You can pry it out and hopefully you can work the rest of it out just slowly. Awesome. There's the snap ring. This is trash. Um, typically, even if it doesn't break, you don't want to reuse them. If you have to, you can, uh, but obviously in this case, it's going to be impossible and our kit comes with a new one, so that's perfect. Okay, so what I did is with a hammer, I popped this inner race out from the other side, install it on this side, and what that's going to allow me to do is press the whole bearing out because it has to come out through the side with the snap ring. Try to center this as much as possible on the press, that way nothing goes sideways. And now what I'm gonna to try to do is just press this down and the bearing should pop out the other side. It might make a loud noise. Oh, there we go, that's what we wanted. Sometimes it takes more pressure than you would like to apply, but now it's sliding out fairly easily. And in a second, it's gonna pop out the bottom. Okay, almost there. All right, that has released from the knuckle. Raise up the press. And remove your tool. Remove the knuckle. And here's your old wheel bearing that you can now throw away. What I wanna do next is just scrape away some of the rust in here. This is where the snap ring goes and this ensures that the new one will seat properly. You can also use a wire brush. Basically, you wanna clean up this surface here um, just to make sure that everything slides in properly. You don't want the bearing to catch a flake of rust as it's going down or the snap ring not seating properly and uh, then something bad happens. So just clean it up as well as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Surface rust is okay, but you don't want any chunks preventing things from going in properly. So just scrape it and uh, make sure it's nice and clean. 
and we'll go down into the hole where the bearing sits, wipe that down too. You can see right there, there's some chunks of rust. That's exactly what you don't want. All right, that's good enough. Let's put the new bearing in. For this bearing, because the ABS sensor is here and it reads off the axle, there's no magnetic exciter ring on the bearing, so it doesn't matter which way it goes in. You wanna drop it down in. I'm gonna use the old bearing, clean it up just a little bit so it doesn't press the dirt into the seal of the new bearing. And you wanna place it on the outer race. You never wanna press on the inner race of the new bearing because that can damage it internally. And that's why I'm using the old one because I don't care if I damage this one. So press it in like that. I'm gonna put a block here just as a spacer and drive it down with my press. As you start driving it into the knuckle, Make sure that it's going in straight. If it's going in at an angle, crooked, that is going to potentially damage the bearing. So always keep an eye and make sure that it's going in straight. So I have to space it out in the back with a piece of metal that's gonna ensure that it remains level. And now you wanna just drive it down until it bottoms out completely. As the bearing is gonna bottom out in the knuckle, you'll feel the pressure on the press. You won't be able to pump it anymore, and that's how you know that it's fully bottomed out and installed in the knuckle. If, uh, so for me, this is going very easily. If it's not going easily for you, you can stop. Um, I actually need to put another spacer in here because I maxed out the press. If it's not going easily and it's binding or going in crooked, stop, reassess the situation, adjust your, adjust your press, adjust your bearing, whatever you have to do. But if it goes in crooked, it can damage the bearing or the knuckle. Okay, right now it bottomed out and I can feel pressure building up on the press. I'm gonna give it one, one more pump. I did like three pumps after it bottomed out just to put quite a bit of pressure on it, make sure that it's completely seated. Now you can release the press, remove your spacer and your old bearing. And here you can see that the new bearing is fully seated. If you don't see the groove for the locking snap ring, then it's not fully in and you need to keep going. In this case, I see it, so let's get the snap ring in. Before I put the snap ring in, I'm gonna clean out the groove for it, make sure there are no chunks of rust, that way it's engaged properly. If the snap ring is not engaged, then your bearing can eventually fall out of its hole. Unlikely, but could happen. Get yourself some snap ring pliers and install the new snap ring into its groove. Make sure that it's seated all the way and you can see how it entered the groove. That's perfect, that's what you want. You can also take a hammer and a screwdriver or a chisel, punch, whatever you have, and just make sure it's knocked down into its groove. Make sure you do not hammer on the bearing surface because that's gonna ruin the seal and eventually ruin your bearing. That's perfect, now let's get the hub installed. I have a large rotor on my press with a spacer block. I'm gonna put my hub on the spacer block so that it's not pressing on the studs, it's pressing on the center ring there. I'm gonna put the knuckle with the bearing over the hub. And then when I press the hub in, I wanna support the center bearing, otherwise, when the hub comes up, it's gonna pop this out. So use this as a support for the center bearing and then just a little spacer in here. There are other ways to do this, but you know, be creative. So to hold the inner race, I actually ended up using this spacer block right here that fits perfectly on that inner race. And now I'm just going to press the knuckle down into the hub. going very easy, which is perfect. If it's difficult at all, you wanna stop and see why it's not working. Make sure you're going nice and even and straight. You don't want this going in crooked. And when it bottoms out, you'll know. There we go, right there, it bottomed out. I'm gonna give it two more pumps, some light pressure, just to be sure that it's fully in. Now release the press. Remove your spacers and everything you had here. And here is your hub and bearing.
perfectly installed. Now take your new knuckle, slide it down on the ball joint stud, push this through perfectly, put the nut on, let's bottom it out, and then we'll torque it. In order to torque that nut, the knuckle has to stop floating around like this. So what I will do is not put the axle through because that'll prevent me from getting a socket on there. But I will put the tie rod stud back through and that is going to somewhat hold it in place and prevent it from spinning so I can tighten up that ball joint stud. So it doesn't have to be clamped on tight. Just want to put this nut on so that it doesn't spin on me. 76 foot pounds is the torque for this. And that's it right there. Now we have to line up the cotter pin slot with the castle nut so we can actually put the cotter pin through. To do that, always keep tightening and never loosen. Slide the cotter pin through and bend it over to lock it in. Okay, make sure it's pressed down all the way because you don't want this to contact the axle boot and tear it. At this point, you wanna make sure you have any C's on the splines of the axle. Mine has some, but I will add a little bit more just because I wanna prevent it from seizing inside the knuckle. Take the axle and slide it through. Make sure it all lines up correctly. If it doesn't, just give the hub a spin to line up the splines. Bring the knuckle, line it up with the strut, and slide the bolts through. Remember, they went in back to front. Put the mounting nuts on, we'll bottom them out and torque them. Now these don't have any adjustment to them, so you don't have to worry about this. Sometimes certain cars will have adjustments, so I just wanted to mention that, that way you know that there's no adjustment to be done here. The torque for these is 113 foot-pounds. There you go. Now I want to coat the surface of this hub in anti-seize. I know it's new and not rusty, but this will actually prevent rust from building up here in the future. So wipe off anything that is on it. You don't want any sand or debris that might have gotten on it just from installation and you working here. Get all of that off, make sure it's a clean surface, and then coat it with a light layer of anti-seize. You don't want a lot because if you put too much, it'll start flinging out as you drive, and that is not something that you want. Also try to avoid getting it on the lug studs because these need to stay nice and dry, clean threads so that your wheel can stay on safely. Now make sure this part of the rotor is clean. I have a new rotor so I don't have to worry about rust building up here, but if you had rust, you'd wanna clean it off, wire brush it, wire wheel it, sand it down, whatever you have to do, but make sure that there's no debris here. Otherwise, the rotor will not sit flat on this hub and you'll have braking issues later down the road. So, slide the rotor on. In order to hold the rotor for me, I'm just gonna put a lug nut on and bottom it out so it doesn't wobble around. There we go, that's nice and secure. Now let's put the caliper on. Take the caliper, slide it over the brake rotor, and line it up with where it bolts onto the knuckle. Put the two bolts in, bottom them out, and then we'll torque them. 79 foot-pounds is the torque for these two bolts. And two. Put the tie rod stud through the knuckle. Press it all the way in so you can put the castle nut on. Bottom this out. And now let's torque it. The torque for this is 36 foot-pounds. And now we wanna keep tightening to line up the cotter pin slot if yours doesn't line up. Mine actually does, you can't see it because it goes this way, but it actually lines up perfectly. So I'm gonna take my cotter pin, put your cotter pin through, and of course we'll bend it over to lock it in. Now let's put the axle nut back on. I'm using an impact gun for this, but I'm not going to tighten it with this. I'm just using this to run it down quickly, and then we'll use our torque wrench and torque it to 159 foot-pounds. To prevent the hub from spinning, I'm gonna use my pry bar and stick it in here to hold it while I torque this down. Okay. Now you'll notice the axle has a cutout here. That's because we wanna punch the axle nut in, and that's how you lock it in place. So take a punch and a hammer, 
and make a little indent. Doesn't have to be a lot. This is enough to prevent it from backing out by itself. Now let's put the wheel on. Put back all five of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and then torque them to 76 foot pounds. And double check them. And there you go, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.